Hey, what's going on everyone? RC84 here. Like always, thanks for watching. Well, my friends, it's time to do the installment of the brass kit that I picked up for my Axel SCX-10 II. If you have not seen a previous video, I will put a link down in the description box where you can see that video. But I ended up picking up a brass kit for my Axel SCX-10 from Yeah Racing. This is a kit that comes with... Uh, comes with the brass turn knuckles, the brass C-hubs, the brass uh, lockout, and two of the brass diff covers. So we're going to be installing that. So I'm going to be working on the rear and work my way up to the front of it since there's going to be a lot more parts up here that need to put together. Now, let's talk about what you're going to need to do this installment. So you're going to need a 155 Meter, uh, millimeter hex key. I'm actually using a screwdriver uh, for that part. And you're going to need a 2.0 millimeter uh, hex key as well. So uh, if you don't have the screw handles, uh, you can use your regular Allen keys, but these definitely do help out a lot. Now uh, let's talk about the rear of it. I'm going to be putting on the uh, lockout pieces on it. Now each one of the lockout pieces here if you guys can see this, if I can get the camera to focus, focus, focus on this. It doesn't want to focus. I always have a hard time focusing with this camera, but switch to manual. As you see, it says 27 grams. So each one of these weigh 27 grams a piece. So let's get this back into focus. There we go. All right. Now, with the lockout pieces, it does come with the mountain hardware, which I think they're stainless steel screws. Uh, as you can see here, yeah, a little bit maybe. <laughs> and it comes with some lock nuts there. And then we have our rear diff cover, which this one is 35 grams. So yeah. All right, so let's get into the installment of all this stuff, all right? So let's watch it. Time to pull off the lockouts and now this is real easy to do. You want to take your 1.55 millimeter hex screw driver and remove your hex nuts here. Pull these off. Alright, we're going to set these to the side right over here so I'll know where it's at. You got these little pins right here that holds your hex of things. Uh, <laughs> try to pull them off. It's a little. So we're gonna take that, slide this out. Should go down. There we go. All right, put this right here on the little magnet there, so that way I won't lose those. Slide this one out as well. Got those, put them up there. Alright, so pull these off of here. We're going to flip this thing over. Like so. I think that does good. I'm going to lock up my uh, stand here so it won't be moving around a lot. Alright. So we're going to take our 2 point millimeter hex drive and loosen them up like so. All right. Now, as you saw, I painted mine uh, a metallic silver. That way, it kind of like I got aftermarket uh, axles, which are not. They're just painted with some model paint there. Kind of a cool idea. So if you know you're not, you're not, you don't have the really budget to do it. So uh, to buy new axles and stuff. Only thing is, you see that it goes back to the original color after a few scratches and stuff like that. But it's all good. So all right. So we get this off. Yeah. All right. So let's get this off. All right, so I'm at the point I can take this. All right, so set this to the side. We can just slide right off. There we go. There's the plastic one. 
Alright. So let's put that off to the side. Then we can put our new one on there. Now before I do so, I, I do want to uh, grease up that bearing a little bit. I set it to the side, it's rolling around on me. Here I go, I thought it was locked, and it was not really locked. Alright, so, let's push move that back a little bit. Alright, good. Uh, I do want to put a little bit of grease on the bearing, uh, just, just to have a little grease there, so. I always like to keep my stuff you know, kind of well greased up and well oiled up. Yeah, I had that saying, uh, well oiled machine is a working machine. So, we're going to take our new one and we're going to put it, let's see, let's do this one right here instead. Hopefully it come out alright. Slide it on. Actually, yep. A little trouble here. Got to get it back into place there. There we go. Slide back in. <laughs> Alright. Oh, the troubles. Alright, so. Try to do it the same way as the stock ones like that. So go ahead and add our screw now I do want to say that these screws are not stainless steel screws at all all right they are metal so they probably will rust now we're gonna put it on the bottom have the screw head on the bottom just like the stock ones get our uh, you know I can actually speed this process up a little bit not making this such a long video but alright so we got that we're gonna take our nut here and I'm actually gonna use my little tire wrench here yes that works out perfectly works out good instead of using needle nose pliers holding it down So we get a good tight there good and tight now we can do the next one pull it off there we go do the same thing as well I'm gonna grease this up a little bit just to have just a little bit of grease on there give that added protection never go wrong can't have enough protection to your vehicle and there we go so that would be nice and run smoothly all right so let's put the next one on slide in like so slide it on boom we are on on like donkey kong all right so i put our next one on goes through take our tool wrench again stick it on screwdriver All right, so got it on there. So the lockouts are done. So we're going to do the diff cover next. The diff cover does not come with the Mountain Harper. You actually have to use your original screws from your diff, uh, your diff cover. Now uh, to do this, uh, I can get the two screws off the bottom, but on the top of it, it's going to be a little more trickier because I don't really think. Actually, you know what? it will work my screwdriver will work I, I i was thinking that it would not work and i didn't want to drop the thing but uh these are some pretty long screws to uh pull out 
So let's speed up that little process. Got my little works gun here. So uh, yeah, this thing is really cool. It's like a like a gun. So it's got a chamber in there. So I put all my bits in there. Run. Now I got this little gizmo here. Something I bought from Wish.com for like a buck. And uh, it makes it really easy to work on tight areas. So uh, let's just do it. Let's, let's see if we can get it. All right, let's back it up. Ah, uh, that is so cool. Paid a dollar for this thing. Look at that. And of course, how easy was that? That was crazy. Let me give you guys a close up look of it, all right? There it goes. <laughs> Gotta love that. Let's do the bottom ones. If I can find them. Let's do the bottom ones. Alright, right there it is. All right, let's put it back on there and get it again. Yeah. <laughs> that is so cool. That is like the best thing for a buck right there. So sometimes, like I said, sometimes taking shortcuts will work out. Sometimes it won't, but definitely. So let's go ahead and pull our case off here. That thing's really sealed. So take a flat head here and maybe try to pry it open there. Yeah, it might need a smaller, well, that is my smaller one I guess. Yeah it's uh, <laughs> it's on there. That definitely shows that it's been sealed up tightly. The crazy thing is I just took it off just the other day to do the maintenance on it. Um, okay so, ah there we go. Alright we found a little weak area. Boom, boom. Take it off. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. Okay, there we go. Got it off. So now let's put the new one on. So here's our new differential. So we're going to put it on. Make sure that you, if you do it, the truck upside down, make sure you put the logo upside down as well. So uh, slide it in like so. It should fit in there. Uh, I've already greased up inside, so I really don't have to do that again because I like I said I did my maintenance uh, Just last week there, so put it on there and uh, We take our screws and screw it back down All right, so we got the back done as you can see there it is the back is done on it focus camera so we got our lockouts and we got our diff cover on and uh, it looks pretty sweet. All right, so to the other side here, that way I can kind of keep track of what screws. All right, that's that, that's the two there. We'll go ahead and do our servo arm. Alright, servo arm detached. We'll stick that in the middle, that way I'll know that's the servo arm. We'll screw. Alright, we gotta take out one for our torque bar here. Alright, so then that's the torque bar. So I got it kind of set up over here, knowing what the top and bottom was. 
All right, so we got that off. So let's flip this thing over now. Oh, screwdriver down. All right, let's do our top C hub, our bottom C hub screws. All right, so I'll set these on that side. that let's set those over there just to know it let's go ahead and undo our C hooks Ooh. he all right he's on there torquey tight so uh, I don't want to strip them out all right so I want to go back and just go with a hand and undo it like that so I know that it's I won't strip out the screws or anything trying to do that that's the only thing about the uh, using a uh, electric drill, a cordless drill, there is that you got to be careful because you can torque, uh, you can torque too much and strip out your you know, screws, especially if they're plastic screws and stuff like that or cheap screws. So you want to be careful on that. So if you start skipping, you definitely want to go back and just do it by hand. And that way, you know, you're not going to cause any damage whatsoever. So just a little tip for you guys. So that way you'll know. Let's take it to the side. There we've got that one over here. Yeah, these are torquey here. Sometimes I don't know my own strength. <laughs> uh, and guys, I'm kind of excited about this because uh I've never really done, like I said in the last video, I've never done really any performance areas to my crawlers or any of my vehicles really because I never really focused on it because I, you know, at the time I really didn't have uh, that many people to run with and living on the coast, the crawling thing is not really big so I really don't need all that performance stuff on there. Alright, so, uh, alright, so now we need to undo our little hexes here. I should have done that first time before, you know, just like I did with the rear, but I didn't do that. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> Lesson learned. Screw the little grub screw back in there so I know I don't lose him. And we're going to also take the little bear, little ball things out. We're going to stick those on the magnet over here so I don't lose those. Because it is a pain to find those things. Alright, we need to switch our dry shafts around so we can get to the other one. Turn, 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 turn. Alright, there you are. Alright. Boop, 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 da, do, 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 da. All right, should come off, tighten him back up just so I don't lose him. Get our little pin out, stick it over there on the magnet. It should pop out with no problem. Like so, there we go. Good, good. So there we go. Now we're going to move our CV joints out. Up there, we'll place them to the side. This one wants to be a little difficult. Okay. He doesn't want to come out like his brother did. His brother came out fine. Oh, I got grease on my hands. So his brother came out fine, but he's not coming out fine. Wonder why?
Oh, there. He just needed a little finesse. <laughs> oh, Lord. And we're going to pull these off. Ooh. Boy, them things are on there tight. Very, very tight, my friends. These things are tight there. Oh, so grease on the hands. But you got to get a little greasy sometimes working on your RCs. That happens. All right, so boom. All right, so let's go ahead and get to our C hubs. Let's break up. And I should have done this stuff a lot you know, before filming wise. But hey, why not show you the whole rope of it all? It's probably going to be a long video. But you know what, my friends? You guys are learning something. I'm learning something because I don't take my vehicle apart all the time. Now, uh, I got a mountain screws for for the uh, C hubs. Now, each one of these C hubs are 17 grams. All right, so they weigh 17 grams. So we're gonna make sure we do this right. All right, so we're gonna put it that way. Yep, that's right because the torque, yeah, our torque bar actually is going to go yeah all right torque bars over here try to think of it's so weird looking upside down at it <sighs> boom we're gonna put our next one on the other side here same way actually no nope. going this way all right Break up in our screws. So guys, I'm taking you on for an adventure here. So I know some of you guys are probably laughing like fool. You don't know what you're doing. Sometimes I don't, my friends. Don't claim to know everything. Sometimes it's best not to know everything. You get to learn things. And I'm learning here myself. Alright. Now actually going to be using a 2.5 for this. This is different. Yeah, so you want to use a 2.5 hex for your C-Hub since these are a little bit bigger screws. Now I know some of you guys are like, won't you use your little your little drill gun there? Speed it up. I could, but I didn't think about do I need it that all right it's pretty tight pretty good so let's do our next one Doo -doo. Doo -doo -doo. all right put that on Doo -doo 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 -doo. Ah. all right my friends Tighten it up as much as I can. Get it squished down there. There we go. Starting to look pretty cool looking, I think. All right. So. All right. I think we can put our CV joints back in there. If I find the right groove for it. There we go. Yes, it went in. It's very smooth, very nice. Let's do our other one as well. Went in a nice and smooth lie. Very nice, very nice. Yes. All right, so we got those in there. So next we'll move to our brass knuckle arms here again let me cut these open take some cheater methods here all right we'll drop these out now the brass knuckle arms my friends are 39 grams each all right so yeah that's good size now it also comes with the hardware as well to mouth it in uh looks like some spacers type deal you know, I don't know why they never send instructions with it, but I guess you just kind of have to kind of guess with it. So, yeah. All right. So, 
let's go ahead and cut up that pack too. Dun, dun, dun. All right. So, I am trying to remember. All right. So let me turn it this way and get a better view of it. That looks a lot better. Let me dial it down. That's uh, the color was a little bright. I think my face was very bright. I don't know how long it's been like that. Oh well. Okay, so this definitely looks like this is going to be for the right side. Oh. And the left side is in here. Yes, it is. All right. So we need to get our bearings out of here that we that were inside of this, uh, inside of our original ones, because you got to put the bearings into that. So uh, take a flat head, try to pull them out without damaging these. Let's pop out the, all right, so we pop out that one, and we should get this one, all right, all right, I'm not going to board y'all with this right here, I'm going to skip through this, so I'm pause the video, work on these real quick, once I get them out, then we'll get back to the video, all right, bear with me. Alright everyone, so back after a short little break there, I had to uh, figure a way of getting my bearings out of my old parts so I can put it into the new brass parts. And I also was trying to figure out what was these little brass sleeves for that came with it. These little suckers right here, if you can see that. And uh, they actually go over your screw and then uh, it'll fit right down inside of where it's supposed to go to mount the, uh, the knuckles on. So I figured that out. Plus, I also switched out my camera uh, to my my camera that I use to uh, do a lot of my RC videos with my Canon Rebel T T5, uh, T5i, the one I use for doing my photography. I do some video work with it, but uh, it's different here on the channel versus what I do with it out on my photography shoots and video shoots. It's a little bit different. I don't know exactly why. Uh, it won't focus too well here, and I, I gotta figure that out. But I switched back to my uh, JVC Evron camcorder. Uh, I've had this camera for many, many years, and it's always done me best. So, might be a little bit of a different um, picture quality and uh, on sound, but 1080p HD, same thing as the Canon Rebel there, 1080p as well, just uh, a lot more features. Uh, yeah, a lot more features versus my camcorder here, but we're going to get on with this. Now, I've gone ahead and installed the the passenger side uh, knuckle on it and uh, turned up pretty well. It's fairly easy to do, and it's the same thing as going to be on this side as well, on the driver's side as well. So, let's go ahead and start doing that. So, get my, uh, my bearings. And, of course, I'm going to put just a little bit of grease on these bearings because I did have to clean them up a little bit. So, I'm just put a little bit there. Stick it down in there. Alright, so we're going to put that there. That way it has some type of... Uh... Hell. There we go. Got it in. So, we're going to put a little bit more grease there. Not too much, I just want to have it coated so it will be well protective when I'm out about. Alright, so we're going to put on our small little uh, bearing which is going to go on the outside. And I'm going to do the same thing, put a little bit of grease on it. This is a, actually a seal bearing, so I'm just going to put a little bit on there just to kind of protect it a little bit. Slide that in the slot here like so. Tight fit, put it in there, get some of this little excess grease off of it, and off my fingers as well. <laughs> Alright, 
So let's go ahead and start mounting this part onto the vehicle. All right, so we got our brass sleeves here. So I'm gonna stick that right on top of it. And we got to get our CV joint here, put it in. All right, so we got our front knuckle here, so we're gonna put it on. I got the bearings put in there. I put a little bit of grease on the bearings as well to give a little bit more protection. And we're going to slide this onto our CV joint, like so. Then we're going to take our screw with the little brass uh, sleeve there, and it fell off on me. Put it down. Alright, so get it there. Alright, take our screwdriver. Screw it in. This is a 2.0 millimeter hex screwdriver. So we're going to put it in. Alright, so now we're going to hook in our steering link here. There, we got connection. So we're going to put on our new diff cover, 35 grams, remember upside down, since we got the vehicle upside down, get in, good. Well, my friends, we are finally done with installing the brass on the SCX-10 II. It looks great. Now, as far as weight-wise, I definitely can feel a weight difference on the vehicle. It's a little bit more heavier, uh, which I hope this will help me out there on the rocks and stuff like that. Uh, it looks pretty good. I really like it. Now, I did have a little bit of an issue while installing the front uh, differential cover there. I actually end up stripping out one of the screws while I
putting in and that's because I was cheating. I was using my electric drill and I said that you know, before that sometimes the cheating way is not the best way and that was a prime example of not the best way. Uh, sometimes you just got to do it by hand my friends. Uh, it sucks sometimes but you just got to do it. That will protect you in the long run really. Uh, but sometimes that drill gun does come in handy for a lot of things. But uh, that's one of the risks that you take. But I ended up did fix it. I got the screw out. I had to cut the head off of it uh, with the Dremel. Get the screw out. Put another one in there. And now I also had another issue of getting the screws all the way in. I don't know if that was a problem with the diff not being properly drilled right. Or it was just my screws or the angle of how everything was. Now I was trying to do this while my axles were attached. It would probably been better the smarter way to take the axles off and do that uh, without being connected to the truck. So that probably would have been the best way so I would have gotten the, the right angles to get the screws in without having to you know, kind of do a slight bend and stuff like that. Uh, so that might be the better way to do it. All right. So lesson learned there. Uh, but this is a lesson for me my friends. Doing this major upgrade, I call it a major upgrade because, uh, you know, like I said, I've never really gotten to the whole performance mod of my vehicles. But uh, for this truck, I definitely want to do it. And it's not going to be a Skeller. It is going to be a straight rock crawling machine. So, yeah. But, yeah. Well, my friends, I'm going to go ahead and finish up the rest of it off the camera. Get the wheels and tires put back on there and stuff like that. And, uh, and then go out and test this thing and see how, it, how it's, you know, it's going to do and everything. But I appreciate y'all watching this video. I know it's going to be a lengthy video and I'm sorry about that. I really don't like doing lengthy videos on my channel. I try to keep my videos kind of short. Uh, but when you're doing a project that requires a lot of information, then that can be, you know, an exception, I guess. You want, you know, if I said that right, exception for this uh, for this video so again thank y'all for watching if you stay through this whole video hey thank you for watching I really do appreciate you taking your time watching this video hopefully this video has helped you guys out in some way so if you're just like oh I'm gonna get that Brad's kit uh, watch your video now I know what to do or how I can do it uh, so yeah so if this video helped you hit that like button all right yeah, so hit that like button. If you're new to the channel and you have not subscribed to my channel, hey, please do subscribe. Help the channel grow. You know, like I say, when you subscribe to somebody's channel, you're not just subscribing. You're not just a subscriber. You're a supporter, and you're supporting what I'm doing, and I appreciate every supporter out there who likes to support me and my channel and what I do. This is all for fun. I don't get paid one cent for doing any of this stuff, guys. I don't get paid from YouTube. I don't get paid from yeah, racing or Axle Racing or any other RCs that I do. I don't get paid for this stuff. This is all strictly out of fun and the hobby of it. And that's why we're all into this for the fun of it. It's not about making the money and the videos and stuff like that. It's just all about fun. All right. Well, my friends, thanks again for watching, and we'll see you, I'll see you, in the next up video, upcoming video. Can't think. All right. <laughs> Later, guys.